Okay. We're going to call the meeting back to order, please. Yeah. We're going to need a motion to call the meeting back to order. So made. Properly moved by Trustee Vorder, seconded by Trustee Olenichek. Uh Please take the roll. Just took a bite. Sorry. <gasps> Trustee Vorder. Yes. Trustee Stripe. Yes. Trustee Quinlan. Here. Trustee Olenichek. Here. Trustee Desmond. Trustee Carberry. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. So, a motion, um, uh, Trustee Carberry. Yeah, may, Madam Mayor, motion to advance 13, item 13 and 14. Okay, we have a motion to advance item 13 and 14. Second. Second, properly moved by Trustee Carberry, seconded by Trustee Quinlan. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Do you any of these? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. And then a motion. Um, oh. Okay. So we'll go. <coughs> excuse me. We have some wonderful residents who have been sitting here. So uh, <laughs> item 13 is a request to approve the planning and development uh, commission referral for a variation from, from ordinance 11-18-42 regarding flat work and impervious surfaces at 10037 South Kildare Avenue, which was an 8 to 0 vote to approve petition 2013-28. Uh, Tom Jazarek, how did I, did I say it? Jarasek, sorry, petitioner in District 4. And item 14 is um, uh, an ordinance granting a, a variance uh, should I read both together? Or okay, item 14 is ordinance uh, number 131451, granting a variance from section 4-5A-7 of Oaklawn Village Code entitled "Residential Flat Work and Impervious Surfaces" to allow for the construction of a res residential addition at 10037 Kildare Avenue. A motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee uh, Border. Second. Uh, that was. Trustee Olenichik, thank you. Seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Any uh, discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Streit? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs> Tom, between the time of P and D and here, you could have had built that addition. <laughs> Okay, now we need another motion to Council. advance. Uh, yes, motion to advance A 27A B. Council, can, I, uh, okay. can we motion C and D as well? Yep. Sure, they're all together. They're all together, right? Okay. Right. Or do I need to take them one at a time? All together? Okay, A, B, and C, and D. Yeah, 27 A, B, C, and D. Okay. Okay, 27 A, B, C, and D. So the motion is to advance those items. Uh, Second. Properly moved by Trustee uh, Carberry. Seconded Second. by Trustee Quinlan. Uh, any discussion? Please call the vote. Trustee Vorder. Yes. Trustee Strait. Yes. Trustee Quinlan. Yes. Trustee Olenichik. Yes. Trustee Desmond. Yes. Trustee Carberry. Yes. Thank you. And I understand the Clancy's are in the audience. Um, would you care to come to the dais if anyone has questions for you? Kevin O. Kennedy and his wife Katie. We wish him well. I'm They're sorry. in uh, I District called you 6. The Clancy, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead. Tell you a little bit about your your new your new entry. Well, this is Katie Clancy, and we are proposing a uh, an Irish themed pizza pub, and it's going to be at 103rd Street, uh, right by Louis and the Jewel over there uh, used to be Orlando's uh, unfortunately Gil has had some health issues and we're taking it over there we're going to have a family friendly place uh, but we do want to be able to serve a beer and, uh, and an Irish coffee as we can uh, with the pizza and the fish and chips and the corned beef and cabbage and everything and uh, did you want to say something Katie? Uh, I'm excited about this opportunity for a business in Oaklawn uh, I'm raising a family here and um, excited about the opportunity Thank you. Yeah. 
So I'm going to read uh, item 27A, which is a request, a request for a class one restaurant <clears throat> liquor bar permitted, live entertainment permitted, and class N outdoor service areas liquor license for Clancy's Oak Lawn Limited doing business as Clancy's at 4624 West 103rd Street in District 6. And B uh, is an ordinance increasing the number of class I and N liquor licenses that can be issued in the village uh, Clancy's Oak Lawn Limited, 4624 West 103rd Street. May I have a motion, please, on 27 A and B? Madam President, I make a motion to Properly approve. moved by Trustee Borders, Second. seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? I do have one question. Yes, Trustee Border. Does your business model plan on putting uh, gambling machines in there? Uh, thank you for the question. Absolutely not. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, Carberry. You know, and I got a I got a chance to uh, to talk to Kevin, and by chance, um, we did know a, uh, and I instructed him to go to give Larry a, a call and, and meet with our village manager, which he did. And he's being humble tonight, but he has a lot. His past experience uh, will serve us well, and I um, I know he's going to be a great success over there. And I'm very excited about him being there, Larry. I think you'd agree with uh, great resume, and we're lucky to have him. So I'm excited about it. Um, and I, w I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, please call the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Now I understand you have a very special type of pizza there. Well, we are going to have a fantastic pizza, and we're going to have fantastic corned beef and cabbage. And uh, our website's going to be eataclancy's.com, and, and you can come to there uh, uh, once we get it up and running. We hope to be open by the end of the month, so we're pushing forward. I, and I'd like to thank uh, uh, everyone here for uh, your support, and uh, hopefully everyone out there in TV land as well wants to come in and see us, <laughs> eataclancy's.com. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And item 27. Thanks, Katie. Oops, Thanks, Katie. Uh, two more items for... Uh, Oh, no, this is a different bar. Never mind. Is anyone from TC's here? Yes. Okay. Please come on up. Best of luck to you. Okay. Hi. Please state your name. My name's Bob Olson, O-L-S-O-N. I have owned TC Pub for the last 15 years at 97th and Cicero. Um, over the last probably six months to a year, we've made major improvements in the bar for anyone that's been into the bar, I think you would see that we put a lot of money into it. I think we've made it into something that the community would like to come in um, and enjoy. Um, at this point in time, I'm putting in an application to take over barcode 99 and asking for a liquor license for barcode 99, which is on 99th and Southwest Highway. Um, the bar was at a point where it was going to close down. I was dealing with the owner of that bar. Um, he wasn't making any profits. He was losing money on a monthly basis. He wasn't putting any money into improving the bar. Um, I met with him, um, negotiated a deal with him in the event that we were able to get the liquor license. Um, I'm looking to make it into a country western bar at that location. I'm looking at cleaning it up. I'm looking at improving the area. When you come down Southwest Highway, which I do on a daily basis, you see the Remax that used to be there on the left. There's a vitamin shop, it looks like, a massage parlor in that little strip mall there. And to the side of barcode are nothing. It's just vacant windows on the sides. What I'd like to do is start with barcode 99. Um, open the bar as another TC pub on the west side of town. I would like to improve it and then down the line, depending on how it does, possibly expand it into the open businesses that are there or form another business down the line. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so item 27C uh, is a request for a Class I liquor license, restaurant liquor, bar permitted, live entertainment permitted. For TC Pub Incorporated doing business as Barcode 99 at 9906 Southwest Highway in District 3. And item 27D is an ordinance granting that request. May I have a motion, please, on item 27C and 27D, please. Mayor, may I just make a correction? And that might have been my problem when I filled it out. I was looking to do it as a TC Pub 2 
and not a barcode 99. Okay, but we wanted do to I need to uh, redo anything or just make a... It's fine as it is. When you do all your business application, you're going to do that, right? Yes, I am. Right. Okay. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So we need a motion, please, on item 27C and 27D. Uh, Mayor, as somebody who's been in the TC uh, pub establishment, and there has been significant improvement there, uh, and that barcode 99 is a place that uh, definitely that end of town has uh, has had problems, and I think that uh, uh, this would be a, a nice improvement. So are yeah, you making so the move, motion? Move to approve. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Properly moved by Trustee Strait, seconded second. by Trustee Warderer. And uh, any other further discussion? I Good just luck. I wish you well. You, yeah. you do Trustee have a, you run a great business. Thank you. Trustee Border. Yeah, Mr. Olson, you run a great business over there for many, many years. Uh, I don't drink there very much, but I've heard a lot of good words. About it. Thank you very much. I hope you can do the same thing on the West End of town. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? Please call the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. I thank you all very much. Thank you. And best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other residents or business groups that we forgot to move up? Uh, I think everyone here then is a spectator or press just in, enjoying the information. Uh, very good. So I believe we left off 12D. on 12D. 12D. Okay, so we went through 12C. 12D is uh, approving recommendation to prepare a transition plan to outsource senior services to the Oakland Park District in 2014-2015 time frame. Uh, may I have a motion, please, on item 12D. Madam President, I make a motion. Properly moved by Trustee Vorder. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion on this item? Mayor Berry. Trustee Strait. Uh, well, now once again, uh, we have a, uh, uh, a request to uh, approve a, a recommendation uh, that uh, there's nothing in our packet about. Uh, I have I have no knowledge of or information of exactly what it is to that we're going to transition now, uh, but. Um, I, I given the uh, the outsourcing and transitioning that we just saw uh, for the uh, the 911 center, it, it sounds to me like we're going to outsource the uh, the senior services now. At, at our last meeting, uh, Trustee Quinlan reported that the Senior Citizens Commission wanted more involvement uh, with a new permanent facility for seniors. And she also stated that she was very much in favor of building a new senior center in conjunction with Advocate Christ Medical Center, but that had been removed from the table by this new board. Uh, Trustee Quinlan also volunteered to head up that committee. Um, so at the very next meeting, we now see a recommendation to outsource senior services. And I, I think I have to ask, I mean, I guess it sounds like we're gonna start to outsource everything here in the village. So should we be trying to pass off our responsibilities to other governmental entities? And don't we owe more to our senior citizens? Thank Madam you. Mayor. Any other discussion, Trustee Carberry? You know, I, I didn't want to keep everyone too late tonight, but, you know, Bob mentioned earlier, um, you know, the deal that was proposed before, and it predates me, um, that would have been a big revenue generator and a big, you know, what, it, Larry, what's the, what's the, the dollars and cents as it relates to, you mentioned advocate, you sure. mentioned the, a lot of things were twisted in there as far as that being that development being a senior center in the in the Christ Hospital paying for and all that and I mean where do the dollars match up to what they were offering then and what we got now and what's the I think we should let everyone know what the the numbers are uh, president board I'd be more than happy to address it I, I I think I alluded it alluded to it in your PIL but the fact of the matter is there was never any work done on a senior center at that location. The developers uh, spent uh, six figures on multiple iterations of plans requested by advocate. Nothing ever materialized. And the plan was to take tax dollars in the neighborhood of $6 million plus and uh, basically it'd be an indirect subsidy to the hospital to reduce the rental price at that location. So there was no, um, no plan um, to do any senior center that was ever directed, developed, 
Um, it was all various plans to incorporate different entities of Advocate Healthcare Network based in Oak Brook, Illinois. And uh, recently they told the developer that uh, uh, they were no longer interested in doing anything at that site. And that was confirmed as well, I believe, by um, the hospital in our discussions, uh, Mayor and Trustee Border. Okay, so there is no dollars whatsoever. There, there would be. And I'm going to let Bob speak to this again because I want some clarity here. Sure. You wouldn't yeah, be mentioning this for anything, and then and then we'll go back because I now that we got it open, I mean I wasn't going to bring it up, but he's always bringing it up again. I want to talk about it. So Bob, sure. make your case. Okay. Uh, address your questions <laughs> through the chair, please. Uh, Bob. Mayor, I like Bob to. Thank you, Bob. Do what he says. Uh, yes. Then. <laughs> <laughs> please. Of course, I will. Um, so, uh, actually. What had happened, uh, uh, Trustee Carver and everyone for that matter, uh, is that uh, uh, there was uh, uh, a request of the hospital to develop uh, in partnership, to, to partner with the village of Oak Lawn um, on a, a, a senior center slash wellness center with a lap pool, a nutrition center, and a lot of different things. Now, and by the way, um, I will tell you that uh, um, when that, and it was the previous mayor that had proposed it, uh, he worked closely, was working closely with the, uh, the uh, representatives of, of Advocate Christ Hospital. And, and by the way, um, they, were, they were working with uh, the village on that. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, had not this, you know, change taken place, that's what we would be working on today. That's a fact. I mean, I can tell many. And Christ what were they Hospital, going to do? Were they going to pay for it? Well, they were. Here's what. And I'll tell you what. What happened is, is back when the when the hospital proposed their go to 2017 plan, they were going to rebuild their entire campus. They came to the village. We had meetings, all of us together, all the board members and the hospital officials, and they said to us, "We would like to partner with the village. Okay, we want you to work with us to." You know, and so those that that was something that resonated with me. It a partnership, a true partnership. So I I personally, as Ken Lucard, would you develop additional sites, this site and additional sites uh, in the village uh, that need, uh, you know, that let's say are underdeveloped. Uh, there's a site on Southwest Highway and Melvina that is in in in. Uh, you know, it's been an eyesore for decades. And uh, so, and, and Ken Lukart said very clearly that I, you know, we will partner with the village on, on, on multiple developments. And that one in particular, there was no, um, there was no, uh, like, let's say, limit to what they were willing to do. There were discussions, there were meetings, there were negotiations. It didn't materialize. I think, and I can tell you what, we can get into why it didn't. I think it suffice to say that, you know, the, the board, when the board changed and the commitment, you know, changed with it, the hospital would have been more than happy to work in that direction, but they made it clear they weren't going to do, they weren't going to pay for all this development and also pay a service fee. That's what happened. It's really that simple. Ma Madam Mayor, may I? interject on that? Uh, yes. I just think it's important to know that in, in August, September 2012, there were meetings uh, about the, the Beatty property that uh, the first we're hearing about them being able to go into other properties is never mentioned before. Yes, it has there was no other discussion ever before, and I beg you to bring that up. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but that day, neither uh, the former mayor or Bob Strait gave any board information on that. I personally requested to be in a meeting that I was told by the former mayor because if there were two trustees and him in the meeting with Christ Hospital that were required to be posted. So I was asked to stay out of it. I then find out that in this very meeting, um, uh, Dennis Brennan, Bob Strite's business partner, is in this meeting going through uh, uh, with the developers for Shea and Rue, in which they were told that they had to work with this individual. Um, when asked about this, Heilman, or the, the former mayor, denied at the board table knowing why Dennis Brennan was there. Um, 
there's emails to prove that uh, Heilman and Brennan on the secret meeting showed that mm -hmm. Heilman obviously knew. <coughs> but on, on November 12th, Duhigg, uh, Trustee Duhigg, Trustee Thalen and myself asked for a vote on the hospital fee. The mm -hmm. vote went through and a 4-3 vote came through in which the previous majority of the of the village board voted down us accepting any hospital fee. No time in any of those discussions was there any other properties or any other development brought up at that point. And afterwards, we find out, based off of what uh, you and Trustee Vorder have done, is that the hospital wasn't interested in any of that. Okay, and uh, Trustee Vorder. Madam President, this is ancient history. The election happened in April. They lost. We're moving ahead. We're going to build a new senior center with the park district if they, by their request, by the way. Okay, and we got 3.2 million. Can we forget about the past and move forward? Okay. Sounds like a lot of sour grapes to me. Any other discussion about this, the senior services? Yeah, I, uh, <coughs> Madam Mayor, I, I just wanted to, it was brought up twice um, tonight, so I wanted to give the village manager an opportunity uh, and he could finish his thoughts. Uh, when you partner, it usually takes an investment. We're dealing with taxpayers' money, you know, and I just wanted to be really clear on what it would have cost the taxpayer if we did it one way to what we have now. That's all I really wanted to know. Okay. And the other thing was, and it's uh, it was brought up in the campaign, but I will say, um, I just for clarity reasons, that never did I, um, nor anybody that, um, that I ran with, uh, speak of Christ Hospital or their leadership or their people or their employees um, with any disrespect whatsoever. Um, I too have a lot of, I know quite a few people that work there and um, very dedicated employees that do a great job. So uh, people that have worked with me and um, I never would want um, anyone to think in any way whatsoever uh, that we're not all on the same team, because we are. You know, whether it's the Oakland Police Department, whether it's the Fire Department, whether it's Public Works, whether it's we're all in this thing together. And um, and um, and by the way, the, the hospital wants us to have a great fire department. They want us to have a great police department. They want great public safety. Um, that just makes their mission better. So uh, I wanted to make that real clear for the record. But Larry, if you want to... I really don't care at the time about the, at this point. If you want to just give us an idea of the dollars of where we're at today and where we would have been and why it was a good decision. I think the people want to know that. Hey, Larry. Sure. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, once again, the, the, the board, when a decision was made not to, to negotiate in, in um, late August, early September of 2012 for a, um, a fee, and I believe Trustee Olenichik stated it very correctly. We were talking <coughs> in the neighborhood of 1,788,000. That was declined. The board directed me to be the point person on their behalf with the developer. I can tell you unequivocally, unequivocally, there were no plans, no progress over the course of the, la of the six months between that decision date in August and early April of a fitness center, a senior center, even conceptual drawings to a meaningful level. There was no progress. Meanwhile, the negotiations bogged down significantly because the developer was incurring costs, doing plans and plans, trying to get a commitment on the behalf of the tenant, in this case, advocate to move forward. And they kept uh, driving the price down, and he told me very specifically that in order to that work, you'd have to apply taxpayers' dollars in the neighborhood of $6.6 .6 million to make that work, and that was basically a subsidy driving the prices below market. Now, that's my job. I know the prices in, in the greater Oakland area, uh, particularly for Class A medical office. I'm very familiar with what the market is, what's occurring, what's happening. And the developer finally, out of frustration, um, reported, and I reported to you, he's, he's, he's had it. Um, he'll put the property on the market. Um, he wishes the community well. The, um, he'll do his best 
to be a good citizen and see that property tra transitioned into some other use. That Those are the facts. Mayor. Okay. Um, Trustee Quinlan. Um, it, actually, Larry, if you could just please let the residents um, completely understand uh, what seniors, you know, what services are you talking sure. about specifically? Sure, I mean, is it dance, happy. exercise? Is it a larger scale than that? Well, uh, if just briefly again, we, we did, uh, if Trustee Quinlan, you were a member, so was Trustee Strike, Trustee Olenichek on this board. We did outsource family services to Genesis at, at my recommendation in 2009. It's been highly successful. So we have examined, that's a nonprofit. They've done a very fine job, but we've been approached by the park district. Uh, they're, they do recreation. Uh, they're, they do an outstanding job for this community. So they like to partner with the village. The mayor, I, uh, I think, will, will speak much better than I can on the plan. So all I'm doing is alerting the board I, I just want your authorization to proceed, proceed and make it available you for you further discussion during the budget process of a plan to make that successful transition. And we're talking about the seniors of the future, existing seniors and future seniors. Are you talking about all the activities that they do? Okay. I'm, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the mission of the village. What, it, what does the village do best? Village of Oak Lawn is awesome at providing public safety, uh, clean water, wonderful streets, a great community atmosphere to live in. We're not really good at programs for seniors. We're just not. And, and when you look at other communities, what they're doing for seniors, they're doing a little bit more than Oak Lawn has done. And I don't think it's because Oak Lawn doesn't care. I don't think it's because Oak Lawn doesn't want to or doesn't love seniors. It's just not really what we do. What the Park District does is programs that enrich people's lives and add, add dimension to their life. And this is, again, not quite the mission of the village. And, and it, it really does more fall in the domain of the Park District, if you think about it. Um, you know, what we do best is not uh, organized bingo. We just don't do that well. You know, um, it, it's really park district, if you think about it. And Trustee Vorder? Yeah, um, Madam President, just to mm -hmm. expound on what you do. As an ex-president of the Oakland Park District and commissioner for six years, you are absolutely right. Okay, this should be in the hands of the park district. That's what they do. And in fact, Maddie Kelly, the director of the park district, reached out to me as an ex-president to, to uh, sell the idea, okay, to this village board. And I passed it on to you and suggested her to you, and you grabbed it and ran with it, and I think you're moving in the right direction. I think this is a great way to see it, to actually expand on the way seniors receive services of this type. I think what we've had is not always what's, you know, the best moving forward. Um, and I think the, the situation with the senior center is a blessing in disguise because we step back and, and kind of rethink what, what would be best for the seniors. And I really, in my heart, don't feel the village does that best. I think I think the park district does. So I'll take one more uh, point of discussion, then we'll call the vote. Just quickly on sure. uh, as far as Trustee the vote Quinn. itself. So are we voting just so that Larry can explore this idea, Correct. and that this decision then would be made uh, at the time of budget? President, I envision yes. that. The end product will go before you and it will be an agreement. It'll be a legal document to transition between the park board voting on it and you as a board of trustees furthering the par partnership that trustee voters talk about. So that's, this is to get you to that stage. Attorneys have to be involved. There's planning efforts. We're working on it to get it to that level. Yes. It come back to you. But it sounds like almost at that point that since attorneys will already be involved in the park district that it's a done deal. So Nothing is a done deal at this point. Uh, okay. so, so what we're voting on, we're approving a, a recommendation to prepare a transition plan to outsource senior services to the Oaklawn Park District in the 2014-2015 time frame. So um, I'm going to call the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strite? No. Trustee Quinlan? No. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes.
Motion passes 4-2. Okay. <coughs> Item 12E. This is an ordinance number 13-14-50, which is amending Title I, Chapter 10 of the Oakland Village Code entitled Departmental Reorganization and Eliminating eliminating the Department of Business Operations. Um, may have a motion, please, on item 12E. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. May I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Vorder. Uh, any discussion on item 12E? Yes. Okay, Trustee Quinlan. Um, first of all, you know, the village tries to get Chad Waller to have him leave by having him sign a retirement and release form. So when Chad doesn't sign that, the village then mysteriously wants to eliminate that position. And I don't get it. Chad has successfully done his job and more. He has brought new businesses to Oak Lawn, from restaurants to clothing stores to banks, to name a few. Isn't that what this board wants? He's, and he has been in charge of special events where each year they have only gotten better and better. These events are always highly praised by our residents. This year, Chad alone raised $75,600 in cash and $14,000 in in-kind donations. Out of the $103,850 already raised for Fall in the Green. He has also been responsible for the beautification of Oak Lawn. Does anyone remember what the water tower in the surrounding area looked like before Chad helped out? Now it looks fabulous. The area around Village Hall looks awesome. Overall, he's enhanced the look of Oak Lawn through landscaping and new signage. Most importantly, Chad's job has entailed helping our local businesses succeed and to bring new businesses yet you want to eliminate the director of business development position. Again, well, actually it's not the position, it's a department now that we're eliminating, especially just before we break ground on the 111th Street and Cicero development. In my opinion, this is ludicrous, and I do believe it's political retribution. I have two questions that I would like to ask. You know, number one, what is the basis for this restructuring, and two, who's going to be taking over his position. Okay, um, thank you. And uh, Larry, would you care to answer those questions? I'd be more than happy to do so, um, President and Board of Trustees. One of the toughest job a manager has is to make recommendations that not always are gonna please everyone. And, and I certainly understand that. Uh, we're moving in a, a direction that, again, very much like I had the discussion earlier about legal services, uh, it's a new phase in Oak Lawn. Um, we need to spend more efforts on retention and reaching out to existing businesses. Uh, the, the responsibility for grounds maintenance and facilities maintenance traditionally has always been a function of public works. My understanding that it, that was the case prior to my recommendation. Uh, as a manager uh, in other communities, um, when I first came here in 2007, I raised the issue. I, I was then facing and presenting to the board a $1.7 million deficit. That's what a, the first budget I went into was a water, water fund that was in the red and about ready to go under. Uh, that now is a very healthy fund. And a budget that, that was not complete, there was no audit in the community, and um, we had a gap of 1.7. Um, I discussed that issue and what I could not understand, the structure of the organization. Matter of fact, I went to the code. First thing a manager does, he goes to the code of ordinances, looks at the how the village is structured, and there was a disconnect. There was not in the code a Department of Business Operations. I was, I was astonished to find that. And I had another discussion, but um, I was basically directed not to make changes in that area, and I understand it. That's fine. But through the course of uh, my tenure here and with what we're looking at for the future, we have to do things different. Uh, we all have to um, accept more responsibilities, as I said earlier. 
uh, when I came here to, to Oak Lawn, I, one of my expertise is economic development, quite frankly, trustee. Um, I do lead the economic development team, and every man and woman sitting over there on the management team contributes fully to successful economic development in this community. I wanted to just briefly share with you um, what economic development truly is in a community. And I have a uh, communication that um, I think you all saw on your TIL. I sent it to you earlier. It's one of many I get. It's from Texas Corral, which was an Indianapolis-based company. They established their first restaurant in Illinois. Now, Indiana is a state. It's, it's very unusual for a business to come to Illinois, given the tax structure. But they were doing so well in Michigan and Indiana, they targeted the Chicago area, and they targeted 95th Street. And when they cut the ribbon, the manager and the owner, who I had spoken to and had, um, had actually spent a lot of time convincing them that this was a good location, they said nothing in any community that they established a restaurant surpassed what they saw in Oak Lawn. It takes every person here, police, fire, engineering, permitting, dispatch, inspections, and fire rescue for life safety. Everybody is involved, and that's economic development. Now, we're, we're, we're going to have to be leaner. We've, we've, we, in 2009, we eliminated positions. The workforce is approximately 20% less. Um, recently, Phoenix, Arizona which is recognized internationally as the best managed city in the United States. It's a council manager, former government. I know the city manager, and he was quoted. Our workforce is approximately 10% lower than it was before. We're all going to have to do more with less. It's just a way of doing business. I respect your comments, trustee. I really do respect them. This is not an easy decision for me. Um, I recommend the board decides based on all the input you receive, and I'll do what the board um, so wishes, but it is my recommendation solely, and I was discussing this, as I mentioned, in 2007, and I was discussing this in April of this year, I was discussing it in May of this year, et cetera. And a manager has discussions with his department heads and his teams about new direction, and I worked with the incumbent as requested from the incumbent and he chose to take a different direction and he's entitled to do that that's fine my biggest my uh, trustee quinlan my biggest fear is you know you have a lot on your plate right now and you know let's be honest i mean you can't handle be our new you know business development it can, it's not yes it is about our existing businesses and making them successful uh, but it's about getting new businesses uh, as well. And that's something you, you simply don't have the time to give it your full attention. And that's, that's a big concern for me. Trustee, and I so, that. It, and that goes back to my second question, which you didn't answer, is who is going to be doing that? I, respectfully, uh, Larry, um, I, I just have to step in here. I, I'm sorry. I, I just net, didn't see a lot of networking historically uh, I, d I just didn't I attend business meetings all throughout this community and I just didn't see a lot of networking going on and Larry I'll let From you finish your I'll let you finish your discussion thank you mayor uh, trustee it is, it both both questions are are very fair and legitimate and I'm again going to turn to the to the team we have a very resourceful organization one thing I I learned a long time ago in management when I come to a community is there's always somebody, particularly a workforce of 300 people, whose skills are not fully being utilized who's on board. So I intend to reach out with every department head within the organization, and I will not be able to do it alone. I don't do it alone. Again, it's that police officer who responds to a call. It's a firefighter. It's men and women on the front line that help make Oak Lawn a place that is is welcoming to business and we're going to have to spread that load while probably find somebody creative in the organization that that will will want to step forward and do things but i i think we're going to do it um not on the same 
expenses were we're all going to have to do a little bit more mayor Barry okay uh, trustee straight uh, well first of all I mean it, it doesn't uh, cease to amaze me how we can justify all of our actions uh, Chad Weiler has been here for I think about eight years and he's never had a problem uh, he has always received strong uh, reviews for his uh, performance um, his only mistake was supporting our former mayor um, it's a shame that we treat our employees in this manner uh, the election may be over and I keep hearing that you know from the uh, uh, from some of the board members but the political retribution continues uh, this was predictable uh, because it was part of the Phelan hit list. And it would be nice if it was over, but it's not. Okay, any other discussion? Trustee Vorder. Yeah, I'd like to go back to 2005 when uh, uh, there was an election turnover and we had a business developer by the name of Jim Webb. And Jim Webb was uh, let go the very day after the election. Uh, actually, I see that happening again here with an election change, but at least the village manager is assuring me that we're not just supplanting with somebody else. He's going to assume those responsibilities, and we're going to save. What's what's Chad's salary? Eighty thousand uh, dollars. Compensation package, uh, wages and benefits are one hundred one thousand dollars. We're saving one hundred one thousand dollars without replacing them. So you just, Madam Mayor, uh, Trustee Olenichuk. I, I think. The point that we all have to look at is it's difficult decisions anytime you have to make any type of personnel headcount uh, reductions, any type of benefit reductions when you're asking for people uh, to help out into the cause. But we owe it to the residents of the village of Oak Lawn to do everything we can to do the best job that we can with their tax dollars. Uh, raising taxes is not responsible. And as we've heard, the concern would be that you know they're going to raise taxes and I think the mayor said it best at the beginning of this meeting that there are members of this board that are dedicated to doing anything but raising your taxes and towing a line um, doing more with less and it has to be done that way and for people to try to make whatever accusations they want to make uh, they can continue to do that it's going to happen no matter what uh, the fact is if we don't be proactive we're going to be reactive and being reactive causes a lot of financial burden to this village look back at when the uh, initial uh, reduction in headcount at this village went on there was gnashing of teeth pulling of hair there are a lot of good people that did not have a job after that whole thing was done but the fact is the village has gone on We've provided the same goods and services, if not better, and we've done it with the reduction in our workforce by using technology and being smarter on how we negotiate things. That's what we have to do. Raising taxes is the easiest thing for people to do, but it's the most difficult for our residents to hand. And I, for one, will work with the village board and the village manager to do everything we can to eliminate and not raise taxes. Okay, and I'm going to call the vote, please. Uh, I'm item, make, uh, Trustee Carberry, make, okay, you didn't get a I'm chance. Gonna make one, uh, I'm going to make one comment. I did speak to our village manager, um, met with him in person, went over many different things. Never did I go, no, and I didn't know till tonight, a uh, specific name. It was mainly talked about. Uh, um, it was more of a business discussion. Never the village manager never referred to a name. I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's unfortunate it was brought up in this venue, but it is. It is what it is. Um, I did support this decision. Uh, the village manager is someone who's who ultimately gets judged by by us for you know uh, the job he's going to do, and he's responsible for um, keeping us keeping the village safe, operational. And, and on budget, and he's going to be held accountable um, every year for that. So there's a lot of tough decisions ahead um, based on a, a lot of the, the information we got earlier, and uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the things that is tough, and I'm sorry it got to the uh, uh, personal um, where it's brought up uh, 
like in this venue, but it has. But I did support the um, the village manager on this, and I will uh, I will vote to uh, I will vote to support the. Uh, the Madam Chair, okay. uh, trust, trust before you call for vote, I've, I got one question. Uh, something that uh, Trustee Vardar said um, that there was a previous uh, business. Uh, well, was there a Department of Business Operations previously? The, the previous board was, was there that was a business development, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yes. A gentleman by the name of Jim Webb. But he was a business development officer, yes, or was he yes. the head of the? He was instrumental in the Target, uh, the Home Depot. Right, but did he did he hold the same position? As, as well, I don't know exactly what the two duties are. I don't know what Chad's yeah, duties were, positions. but he was a business development. The election occurred. He was gone the next day. Within a couple of weeks, Chad was hired. Appeared to me at the time as just a resident who attends board meetings to be a legitimate political change. It is a political position with, at the discretion of the board, and the change occurred. Okay, so here This is political. So, so we're going to call the vote. Uh, <laughs> Trustee, I mean, uh, Clerk Quinlan, please call the vote. Trustee Border? Yes. Trustee Strait? I just thank Trustee Border for telling <laughs> yeah. the truth. It, this is political retribution. Excellent. No. Trustee Quinlan? No. Trustee Olenichik? This is an elimination of a position. There's not another hiring going in. It's not political retribution. That's correct. Yes. The only way you could get around the policy. Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes 4-2. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, item 12F, direction to the, <coughs> excuse me, direction to village council and finance director to prepare and amend the 2013 budget to be approved by the board at the next board of trustees meeting to eliminate specified vacant village positions. Uh, may I have a motion, please, on item 12F. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mayor. Trustee Strait. Uh, once again, I don't see uh, any documentation regarding which of the positions are going to be eliminated. Okay. And, uh, so, you know, I, and I've heard that it's, again, all this talk about how we're not going to raise taxes it's and we're going to save money. And uh, It was in Trustee Vorder's packet. Okay. All right. Well, it was in the rest of the packets. Yeah, it's not in my packet. So you know, my, what I want to point out is that uh, you know, we can sit there and say that uh, you know, we're, we're doing all these things to save money, and, uh, but I think, and it, it sounds pretty good. I mean, I will, sell, I will tell you, you're making a, at least um, a, a reasonable case to somebody who doesn't know better that you know, what's really going on here. And so, uh, you know, I'm just going to very simply say uh, that I'm going to have to uh, be opposed to this. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Uh, Trustee Quinlan. Just, so I, just to be clear, I am opposing it. Um, and the reason is it's not appropriate to bring it up at the board at this time. This is a budget item. Again, no documentation except for one little letter that talks about the positions and that, gee, we'll, we'll, we'll have this grand understanding after Pat O'Donnell speaks. Well, you know, it, again, this is a brand new board. There's a lot of new people here that haven't gone through this budget process and that how do you make decisions without knowing any facts, any financial information, no financial information was given to us about these positions. And so I would like to say, let's get the information that we need before we're voting on something okay. and to do something like this. Larry, can you please provide sure. her with that uh, information before the vote? Uh, uh, President, um, I'll take responsibility, um, and I apologize, maybe the, the lack of clarity. Um, you'll have an opportunity when you prepare the 2014 budget to see these positions but I have an obligation to tell you that we have positions currently in the budget that are vacant and I do not intend to fill them. <coughs> um, 
I've done my best to listen to our treasurer. I think that's my responsibility. Uh, Brian, myself, Joanne, we've been working with Pat for some time. This is a issue that we cannot ignore. So these are the following positions that I do not intend to fill. You'll have an opportunity during the budget process to have further discussion for 2014. But if these positions are not filled in 2014, as well as the rest of this year, I'm trying to save money in the current year, trying to, trying to get that fund balance up. If you remember the, um, the presentation by Pat, as far as the downgrading in the bond, there were two areas that we needed to address. Fund the pension more, which I believe we should do. I agree 100%. And the second one was to get the fund balance up further, and I agree with that as well. So if we can, even though we have a budget for the current year, um, uh, President and Trustees, if the following positions are not filled, we will accrue some savings in the current year. But in 2014, if you don't fill them, you will accrue savings well in excess of 826000 These are the positions. The so senior, it is just for this senior year. Senior services, and these are gross savings, benefits and salary on an annualized basis, and that would be reoccurring and reoccurring if you don't fill the positions. Three telecommunicators are all vacant. The senior services director, which is vacant. Police clerk, which is vacant. A senior police detention uh, based on a retirement would become vacant on or about October 1st. Um, a maintenance worker, uh, three maintenance workers, uh, two firefighter positions, all vacant positions, um, and that total is cumulative $826,000. Now, there are consequences when you don't fill positions. I fully understand it. So in the budget process, trustee, we will be talking about it for, for ensuing next years. year. Correct. But during this current year, I wanted you to know in advance, I didn't want any surprises, I didn't want someone to say, how come you're not filling this position? Because there are applicants, there are folks that would like these positions. I, I wish we could fill them, and our goal has always been to fill positions with Oakland residents. But first and foremost, you, it'd be irresponsible for me to fill them based upon what we all know from our treasurer. Okay. Madam Mayor? Trustee Olenichik. I just want to let you know that the paperwork that I got, very informative, but just the elimination of vacant village positions is clear enough to me. Vacant village positions. Very clear. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion before I call the vote? Okay, let's call the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? No, we could save a lot of money if we fired everybody and we eliminated every position and outsourced All the vote, everything. please. So. Trustee Quinlan? Is yes. that how you run your business? Trustee Lenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion PSS 5 1. Thank you. Thank you. And we have item 12G, General <laughs> Village Matters. I'm, I'm, I'm done. done. You're Thank done? You. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I believe we moved um, 1314 forward. Uh, item 15 is a request uh, to approve the Historic Preservation Commission's referral to amend Title VI, Section 8 of the Village Code and allow a historic site to be altered without village approval, but prohibiting the demolition of a designated site without the approval of the commission. This was a 3-0 vote to approve. And uh, item... Uh, 16 is an ordinance, uh, let's see, is that the same? Yeah. Proof. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Trustee Olenicek. Um, before the board, um, you know, because uh, it's a historic site uh, here in Oak Lawn, he felt that it might be worth it to have these owners to approach the Architectural Review Board, um, you know, show them their plans. I mean, we made it a historic site. What what site are you referring to? The request to approve the uh, Historic Preservation Commission's referral to amend. Um, okay, but you're talking about a specific location. Can you? I, I think it's, a, it's making an amendment to the general. Uh, okay. Code. Can you s come up and state your name, please? Thank you. How are you? Good. Uh, my name is John Benware. I'm the chair of the Architectural Design and Review Committee. And it appears that this amendment would amend the Historic Preservation Ordinance to allow an owner to make changes to an historic structure without any sort of 
village review or approval. I have a feeling that that w it seems to be taking away any sort of protection that the community was intending for an historic building by doing this. And there doesn't seem to be any other mechanism to protect the community's interest in historic buildings and historic preservation. Can you explain the 3 0 vote to approve? I don't know. I was not present at the historic uh, okay. uh, preservation committee. Okay, uh, we have the chairman of that committee. Can you please come to the podium and identify yourself? Hello. Debbie Fagan. As chairman of the Historic Commission, I would just like to say that the intent of that was so that people, for instance, um, there's very, <laughs> there's essentially nothing really historic much left in Oak Lawn. Um, that's not the good. Intent, <laughs> the intent, uh, you know, because people have historic designations. For instance, um, the old fire chief's wife has her house designated as historic. You know, it's a it's a very plain home. You know, a two bedroom Georgian. Um, other than that, there's absolutely no historic to value to things. So, the reason it was put in is we're saying if somebody wants to take down something that is been given a historic designation, the historic committee would like to have the opportunity to look at that. Um, but you know, the, uh, the other intent is to allow people, for instance, who need a ramp uh, in their house uh, it, because somebody becomes disabled, to be able to put that ramp in and not have to worry about it. Because literally most of the things that are designated historic are designated that way because somebody from the village lived there, Ernie Kolb or you know, some prior member of something lived in one of these places. So that's the intent of the thing, is to allow people to make, you know, uh, one fellow that's on the board, by the way, lives in a, what's considered a historic home, and he would be looking at $98,000 to put windows identical to what are in his house uh, that are extraordinarily drafty if you put the same kind of windows back. You know, we're not looking to do that to people. We're trying to be uh, friendly to uh, the homeowners. The word, the, the word that's uh, being struck is agent. alteration. That's correct. And just no, no, alteration. Just alteration. If it's demolished, you know, you somebody wanna wants know. to demolish it, we want to know about it and have some input on that if it is truly historic to the community. Trustee Carberry, looks like. Yeah, I um, kind of agree with the, the first um, um, Mr. Ben Ware. Well, and you as well. I agree with both, but maybe this could be, um, I think they could work, they could, I think the committee can come up with a resolution that makes sense. You know, maybe they could review existing historical sites if they deem, if they well, shouldn't. You've already reviewed them. Well, if they so shouldn't. If they would like to review them, vote. go ahead. Well, yeah. I mean, Mr. Benware, would you care to and, come up to the podium? I guess, I guess what I'm saying, if we need to go through a review, then the committee could vote on it. And they I mean, did. everyone here is going to be uh, fair. I mean, it does make sense. Why would you, you know, spend $100,000 on windows in the house, you know, C things certainly. like that? And, and when uh, some when commercial buildings have come before our committee, I have asked uh, specifically whether or not these buildings have been designated historical in Oak Lawn, because otherwise that's how we will, you know, temper our discussions when we look at a building. Uh, and it's not our intention to put any owner, you know, in financial distress because of it. But I think at some point, you know, there are usually variations of what can be done, whether it's preservation versus restoration. I, mean, I understand putting, uh, you know, $98,000 into identically historic windows is obviously never... Not, Madam not Mayor, always. I'm going to ask questions. Okay. How many historical sites do we have? either seven or nine and um, they're all homes I mean the you know the Harker home for instance is at 96th or 95th and uh, La Crosse and it's a two-bedroom Georgian it is a historic designation because of the fact that he was the first fire chief or you know an important fire chief in in Oak Lawn. So did you guys, do you guys, um, what happens, did you have a vote on whether that should or should not be a historical site? They don't have a vote. We vote. And? And, and we haven't designated any new historic sites because there really aren't any. 
I mean, they're, you know, we are now taking photos of things so that when they're torn down gas stations that have been in the village for years or whatever, we have historical documentation of that. But um, the only site that I can think of. Um, well, I remember the site it could have been. I remember the old courthouse behind Valleys. Remember? Hmm? At school. Cook School. Yeah. Yeah. Cook School? Yeah. Cook School. Oh, that's been taken so anyway, off all the records. I understand, but yeah. I'm saying and I And I'm going to just uh, try to rein this in. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I get it, but um, I just, I'm just trying to think of how, you know, why we're... We just, it, it, it came up because somebody <coughs> asked about... Um, not the BFW, but the other place, um, you know, that was the morgue, for instance, during the uh, the um, tornado of 67. Santa Claus. What is it? No, it's Santa Claus. It's the place at 94th here, right by the village. The Masonic Lodge. Okay. And the Masonic here. Lodge. I'm sorry, I wasn't hearing you properly. And yeah, and so that is a place that is historic and we don't want it torn down unless we have the right to say something about it but nobody's volunteering or have come before the before us saying they want to make changes to it or anything okay I guess I guess my point is this I think we need to have at least some sort of protection you know before significant major changes ever occur to us. It wouldn't hurt, right? I mean, it doesn't cost anyone to go it before your committee, and if to, anything, maybe they could find it, a better alternative to something, so. Yeah, it doesn't That's seem okay. like there's that many. Any other discussion okay. on these items? No. Okay, let's call the vote. We are voting on item 15 and item can we, 16. Can we move to postpone and maybe amend how that's worded? They're the Maybe ones who adding? are recommending body that brought it up to us on a 3-0 vote. It's their recommendation. I understand. I'm not arguing with it. With that, my point is, if, <coughs> if the architectural review board would like to be a part of that, you know, if the somebody were to make a change, why why is that a bad thing? The, it was the architectural review board that made this recommendation. No, no it wasn't. Historic. I'm sorry, historic. Okay, is the historic review board? Right. But okay. I, I don't see what the difference of alteration is. I mean, you have to go by village codes if you're going to alter your house too. So, but this is a okay. historic Please site. Please try to direct your questions through the chair and not each other. Um, Want to let them know too? Please answer her question, then we'll call the vote. I. Okay, let's call the vote. Motion, there's a motion to table. I'll second that motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, so we're we're so motion to postpone or motion to postpone to the next meeting, or motion to table, or motion to refer back to the committee. What do you want to do? Yeah, if if the, so those I two want to go back to the motion to refer it back to the committee. Okay, we have a motion to it. refer it back to the committee. Do we have a second? Yes. Okay, properly moved by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Carberry. Uh, any discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Border? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. And that was for both items 15 and 16. So yes. we're moving on item 17. Uh, item 17 is resolution number 13-14-37, a resolution approving the K-5 Construction Corporation's bid pursuant to the 2013 Additional Infrastructure Program. Uh, may have a motion, please, on item 17. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Warder. Any discussion on this item? Please call the roll. 17. This is item 17. I thought we did 17. Did we no. do 17? No. Okay, Warder. Trustee yes. Warder. Yes. Trustee Strait. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Quinlan. Yes. Trustee Olenichik. Yes. Trustee Desmond. Yes. Trustee Carberry. Yes. Okay, item 18, resolution 1314-38 um, is a resolution approving the proposal of J. Narduli Concrete pursuant to the 2013 Alley Paving Program. We have a motion on item 18, please. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Excuse me. Please take the roll. <laughs> Trust, trustee Vorder. Yes. Wrong, wrong board. <laughs> Sorry. Trust, trustee Strait? No. Trustee Quinlan? No. Trustee uh, Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Strait? No. Trustee Quinl
Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes 4 2. Okay, item 19 is a resolution number 13 14 39 authorizing the execution of a local agency agreement and preliminary engineering services uh, agreement pertaining to the Museum Drive signalization project. May I have a motion, please, on item 19? Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Desmond. Go ahead. Seconded by uh, Trustee Quinlan. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Ilanichik? No. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes 5 1. Item 20 is a request to waive the bidding process and award the tech, uh, GHA technologies with the contract for two servers in the IT department in the amount of $49,428. And uh, I don't know, is my number wrong here? 40, 41 40, cents. 42. I, I, 42 49. cents. I show 412 on my sheet, sorry. Um, may I have a motion on item 20, please? Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Desmond. Second. Seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Any discussion? How please. are we? Uh, Trustee Carberry. Mr. Madam Mayor, um, Larry, how are we procuring the, the servers? Are we purchasing them, leasing them? Uh, these are part of our 2012, uh, 2013 current leasing program for equipment. So okay. it's a capital lease program. And I, I did review it with our treasurer uh, and with Joanne prior to the night. Any other discussion on item 20? Okay, please take the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. <clears throat> 21. Item 21. Uh, item 21 is a request for to a, a request approval to waive the competitive bidding for the purchase and subsequent capital lease of two 2013 Ford pickup trucks with two-way radios for the water division from Hawk Ford of Oaklawn, Illinois, in the amount of $44,988. Motion to approve. Uh, have motion uh, to Second. approve properly moved by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Uh, Larry, did, did I get a memo from you saying that you were going to remove these items yes. in light of the finance report? Item, item 21 and 22, I would respectfully uh, request that uh, we withdraw consideration tonight, um, but I'll have it back to you after further review. I believe they're both needed, but um, the treasurer and Brian and I are going to take a look at it with Steve. We're going to go over it. We'll be back to you within the specified period of time. It's a current <coughs> 2013 budget, but we're reviewing any capital items that remain in the current budget. Thank you. So we're... We need a motion to postpone that. I'd like a motion to postpone uh, item 21. I will gladly change my motion from approved well, to... Motion to postpone. Okay. Be I'll make okay. a motion to postpone. I change okay. mine from approval to postpone. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Um, and this is on item 21, and then we'll do tw 22 separate. Uh, any discussion on the motion to postpone? Uh, please take the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Item 22, yes. thank you. Oh. Item 22 is a, re uh, is a request for approval to waive the formal competitive bidding and award purchase and subsequent capital lease of one 2013 pickup truck with plow for sewer division from Hawk Ford of Oaklawn, Illinois, for the amount of $29,682. Motion to postpone. Uh, properly moved by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Border. To postpone, right? Motion to postpone, per the request of the village manager. Okay, any discussion? <coughs> Please take the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Ilanichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. 
Item 23 is a request to place term limits for elected officials on referendum in the spring of 2014, and this is requested by trustees Desmond and Carberry. Uh, who would like to start with this one? Um, Any discussion? Trustee he, Desmond. You want me to motion to approve? Yes. Motion to approve. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Pardon me. So thank you. <laughs> we have a motion to approve by Trustee Desmond, seconded by Trustee yes. Carberry. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, um, this is an item I think that needs a lot more discussion than we would probably have time for tonight. I would uh, propose we postpone this to the next meeting. Okay, so we have a motion to postpone. Or you could refer to your legislation committee uh, and then have the discussion there. Well, we have we have a meeting uh, coming up on the twentieth, so we could go okay. ahead and push that in there and make a recommendation coming back. So we have a motion to postpone. Second. Properly moved by Trustee Desmond, seconded by Trustee Quinlan. Uh, any discussion? Yes, I mean I uh, would like to see exactly what the term limits would be, how many terms, mm -hmm. what offices it would apply to. Okay, before I cast the vote. Okay, of Adam course. Chair. Of course. Uh, just to uh, answer. Trustee Desmond. Um, I think that was the whole point of uh, the discussion we would have had tonight, to discuss all those items. So hopefully okay. we can do all that at the next meeting. There was a mem there was a memorandum, oh, that Madam the Mayor. Meeting. There there was a memorandum that was put out to talk about exactly just that that we could review, but uh, right. it is getting late into the night. There was some good information on that. So. Okay, okay, so let's take the vote. This is to postpone. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Postpone. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. Item 24 is an authorization to pay ComEd for burial of overhead utility lines. May I have a motion on item 24, please? A motion to table, please. Second. Motion to table by Trustee Carberry, seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Any discussion? Um, I just There's want no to discussion on table. It okay. Oops. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Take the vote. Trustee Vorder. Yes. Trustee Strait. Yes. Trustee Quinlan. Yes. Trustee Olenichik. Yes. Trustee Desmond. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Carberry. I'm falling yes. asleep. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for those of, uh, in, in TV land who may be t tuning into this meeting partway, we started about five hours ago. <laughs> so we're getting a little punchy Thanks, here. Glory. <laughs> Item 25 is a recommendation by the village manager regarding real property acquisition. May I have a motion on item 25, please? Motion to postpone. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to postpone. Second. <laughs> by Trustee Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Quinlan. And any uh, discussion? Okay, let's take the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. Item 26 is our wonderful village clerk's report. Oh, it'll be an uh, hour long because I haven't talked all night. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, uh, disbursement resolution number 2013-13D, <laughs> approval of semi-monthly disbursement dated July 23rd, 2013, in the amount of $2,614,957.99. Motion to approve. Properly moved. <laughs> okay, uh, properly Alex. moved by uh, Trustee Lenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Comments don't count from the front row. Uh, any discussion? Please take the vote. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Lenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes. Item 14B. And then I have a couple after. Mm -hmm. Disbursement resolution number 2013-14D, approval of semi-monthly disbursements dated August 13th, 2013 in the amount of $4,212,951.33. Okay, may I have a motion for approval, please? Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Second. Olenichik, seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Please call the vote. 
Trustee Vorger? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Ilanichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Motion passes just a couple little things. Upcoming village events this Saturday, August 17th, St. Catherine of Alexandria has their uh, charge on uh, 5K run. For more info, please call Donna Marie Ivers at 708 424 4186. And on Sunday, August 18th, <coughs> Trinity Lutheran Church at 97th and Brandt is hosting a rally, picnic, and car show from noon to 4. And on Sunday night, August 18th, the village uh, will host their last summer concert. And we have CTA, Chicago Tribute Anthology. It's a great band. I hope to see everyone at all of these events. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 27, the village president's report. We already uh, discussed item 27A, I believe, and 27B, as well as 27C and D, um, or C. Uh, we have uh, the, the Patriot Station update, the Metro Station update. I am super proud, super excited that Oakland's Metro Station name change, which was voted by this board back in February of 2012, uh, we finally received the blessing by Metro for that name change. Uh, several meetings with Metro representatives uh, and, and representatives from the Congressman uh, Lipinski's office have taken place in Oakland, and the station will now receive this unique and powerful designation. Um, as you may recall, September 11th is uh, designated as Patriot Day, and it's very fitting that the station, which has the Oakland Rotary Club's 911 First Responder Memorial, that it uh, be Oakland's newly named Patriot Station. Um, just a quick construction update. Uh, we're moving along. The pavers should be in shortly. Uh, the granite caps and signs will be a little while longer. But uh, very exciting news. Uh, if you look at any metro map, there aren't too many places with this type of designation, and it's a true honor for Oakland. Very, very proud of it. Um, and then moving on uh, for the Advocate Christ Medical Center update. Uh, You've seen a lot of big smiles here at Village Hall. You see how hard we're looking to find, you know, 50,000 here, 100,000 there. Well, this $3.2 million agreement with Advocate Christ Medical Center that we're announcing is huge. Um, it will greatly enhance the stature of this already fantastic hospital in Oakland. And as part of this agreement, the hospital has already uh, paid $2,033,000 in permit fees, and we're excited to finally be moving forward as enthusiastic partners in our respective visions um, and missions uh, for the enhancing the quality of life, safety, and uh, livability of Oakland. Uh, I want to thank the early visionaries who are the champions of this agreement. Uh, they worked for years. Uh, we have. Trustee Tom Duhigg, former Trustee Duhigg, former Trustee Phelan, uh, Trustee Olenichik. We have our, our former Planning and Development Chair, Radis. Uh, Commissioner Gray was here also earlier. Um, and especially the voters in Oakland. Uh, you can expect a joint press release, uh, which will formally announce this agreement soon. Um, scheduling conflicts and just the details and craziness of this meeting have prevented that from going out tonight. Um, and just a senior update. Uh, as you may know, the seniors have been in a temporary home and we've been working like crazy to find them a new home of their own. Um, even with a tight budget, we're trying to find creative options uh, to, to do what's best for them. So we're exploring this partnership with the Park District, a local business, and the village to try to make this happen. Um, so looking at several sites, it quickly get, became clear to everyone that the best site potentially for a new senior center would be at Memorial Park, which is also Rocket Slide Park, which is being completely renovated. Um, the old bathhouse where the pool was is about 4,000 square feet and has ample parking. Uh, the seniors want their own identity with the building, a place of their own, and in my focus groups they were extremely excited at the opportunities. Um, engineers have been on site and we're waiting for their report. Um, this would be very, very wonderful and exciting, and uh, again, it, this type of partnership will, t will save taxpayer money. Okay, moving on to commissions. Um, I believe, Jane, these were in the packet, these uh, resumes? Okay. Yeah, so we have, um, pardon me, please. 
So the Architectural Design and Review Commission uh, has uh, a, a few uh, months ago, we expanded the number of people on that commission uh, by two. At the 95th Street Corridor meeting, uh, there were two very, very energetic young women who said, how can I get involved? How can I get involved? Um, so I, I'd like to request to approve uh, them to those vacant um, appointments. Um, the first is Patricia Rojo, and she is an architect. And the second is a designer, and her name is Carol Massey. Um, both are wonderful, committed. Um, I'd, I'd really appreciate uh, a motion to approve their appointments tonight. Motion to approve. Properly Request moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Okay, and just with respect to appointments, uh, it, I'm very sorry to learn that one of our um, special events committee uh, members uh, had to resign due to health reasons. So we have a vacancy at a very critical time right as we're getting ready for fall on the green. Uh, under my appointments, I didn't specify this, but I, I would like to request um, uh, an emergency appointment, if you will, but but however, this, this person is definitely worthy of a non-emergency appointment. Her name is Sue Murphy. I'm gonna read a little biography. Uh, Sue Murphy has been an Oaklawn resident for the past 29 years. Her husband, Mike Murphy, is the president of the Oakland Library Board of Trustees. She's a mother of three children, Michael, 26, who's serving in the U.S. Air Force uh, as a computer programmer, Samantha, 22, who's a special rec early education major at Trinity Christian College in Palos Heights, and Joseph, JP, who's entering his freshman year at Eastern Michigan University. He was just here tonight as an Eagle Scout. Uh, um, being honored. Um, he, he's going to study aviation management and he's enlisted in the Navy ROTC program at the University of Michigan. Sue has been self-employed in the home decorating business for the past 19 years. Being an active member of our community, she served on the Oakland Park District Board of Commissioners for the past four years. She's currently the president of that board. She's the secretary at the St. Germain Catholic Church Finance Council and is also the founding president of um, Community High School District 218's Educational Foundation, for which she served for three years. Um, I apologize to the board for not having this in the packet. Um, this did happen uh, in, in recent days, and uh, you know we're, I think we're very excited to have someone like Sue um, and, and Trustee Desmond, I understand that you were enthusiastic about this as well. Um, so yes. I'm going to ask the board for a motion to approve. Can we take them one at a time? Uh, so just sure. to point one and then two and then three. Can okay. I just ask one question? Sure. Um, for Sue, is she, so she's in the same district as the person correct. that had her? Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah, correct. Uh, it's a district four. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so we're going to... Well, we uh, have a motion to approve. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to do one okay, at a time. So, so for Patricia? I, I need a motion, please, for Patricia Rojo. And so moved. Properly moved by uh, Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any discussion? Okay, let's take the roll. Trustee Vorderer? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. And the next is for Carol Massey. So and, moved. Uh, properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Okay, just a moment, please. And the last one, I know this is an emergency appointment. It's not on our agenda tonight. I would just say that we make the motion to approve her appointment until the next meeting we'll put it on the agenda and bring it back for formal approval so if you want to take action tonight in the interim that's okay but it's not on our agenda okay uh, so just recognize that this really has to come back at our next meeting okay for formal what he said moved okay <laughs> properly moved by trustee olenichik second. seconded by trustee vorderer any discussion please take the roll trustee vorderer yes trustee strike yes trustee quinlan yes trustee olenichik yes 
Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry. And just under general village matters, I would just like to extend my sincere condolences on behalf of the board to the family of our, our fire chief sheets on the loss of his mother. Um, our, our heartfelt sympathies, chief, and uh, everyone on the board extends them as well. So and on that note, uh, I'd like a motion, please, to adjourn. So moved. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. I'd like to discuss this. Okay, wait. Uh, <laughs> seconded by... I need a second. Second. Seconded, seconded by Trustee Border. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, and we are not here. We are not here till midnight. So good job, guys. It's a heck of an agenda.